Okay. You're on. You are asked to appraise a machine that is rated at a production level of 300 units per hour. The machine is two years old and has estimated remaining economic life of six years. Similar machines producing 275 and 350 units per hour sell new for $2,200,000 and $2,800,000 respectively. It costs $35,000 to install these machines. So, 6 divided by 8 equals 0.75 or 75% good. Uh, That's step one and kind of step one and figuring out the problem. Well, there you go. You need to know 75% good. You need to know. Um, comp one, uh, comparable one, sold at $8,000 at 8,000 per unit. Comp two sold at 8,000 per unit. So 300 times, oh, because the first machine, the machine that you're appraising has a production level of 300 units per unit, um, 300 units per hour, uh, excuse me. So then you take the 300 times the 8,000 equals 2,400,000. Then you take the 2,400,000 and add 35,000 because um, it costs 35,000 to install the machine. So your total then becomes 2,435,000 and then you take the 2,435,000 multiply that by the 0 0.75 equals 1 1.0 or 1,826,250 appraisal cost value. I'm an appraiser. <laughs> A drill press in your jurisdiction must be appraised for January 1 of this year. Owner's records indicate the machine was purchased three years ago for $68,000 and other information indicates it had an economic life of 15 years when new. Price the differential information, no, price differential information suggests that inflation has caused prices to rise by nearly 10% over the last three years. 12 divided by 15 equals 0 .80 or 80% good. 68,000 times 1.10 equals 74,800. 74,800 times 0 .80 equals 59,840. Do you know where all those numbers come from and what they do? Well, the economic life is 15 years. The machine is three years old. So three years minus 15 is 12. So 12 divided by 15. Okay. Three what? years ago, it's 68. Oh, the machine was purchased 68,000 for $68,000, but the prices have risen 10% over the last three years, so that's why they multiplied oh. it by the 1.10. 1. Yeah. Oh, okay, because I that's what I was struggling with. I was like, um, okay, the value of a machine must be determined through a comparison of sales of similar equipment. Analysis indicates that prices have increased 2% each six months for the past several years. Sales prices seem to be seem to vary based on output at the rate of $200 per, for each hour of capacity. The subject machine produces 120 units per hour and it is three years old. The sales data is as follows. Uh, what is SP? Sale price oh, okay. for comp one, but you're going to want to read down the column. Right, 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 right. Um, okay, so for comp number one, the sale price is 28000 The time is one year. The adjustment is 1120 The adjusted sale price is 21120 The product is 100 units per hour. The adjustment is 4000 Uh Production. 100 units per hour, probably. Okay, and then ADG, ADJ adjustment? Adjustment, yeah. Okay, 4,000, and indicated value 33,120. Yeah. So for comp number two, um, sales price 32,000 times six months, adjustment 640, adjusted sales price 32,640. 
uh, production 110 units per hour, adjustment 2000, indicated value 34,640. Comp number three, sales price 35,000. Um, it must be brand new, so there's no adjustment. So the adjustment sales price is 35,000. Uh, pro production is 120 units per hour. So there's, you subtract um, 2,000 adjustment, and then the indicated value is 33,000, which is the most comparable. It's probably the most comparable <coughs> because there's no time adjustment and there's no time adjustment and no other adjustment which I don't know what those other adjustments are and so uh, oh I guess it's a dollar amount that's what they that's what it is this dollar amount so the time adjustment is for the number of months and then the adjustment is the dollar amount that you're going to figure because it says two percent has a two percent for each six months adjustment appreciation but they don't have a figure for that so that means comp three is as old as our subject and then the, su the subject uh, produces 120 units per hour so as does the comp three so that's why they're saying oh that's why you take that off yeah but I don't know why we're deducting two thousand bucks I'm not sure about that yet oh okay oh well they're just giving it well, they must be just giving the no you have to do the math for those okay anyway go ahead okay number six an assemblage of equipment produces at a rate of 12,000 units per day. Sales of similar equipment is as follows. 375,000 divided by 15,000 equals $25. Uh, 318,750 divided by 12,750 equals $25.10. 412,500 divided by 16,500 equals $24.97. So the, you're going to take 12,000 because that's how many units per day your product is times 25 equals 300,000 plus $25,000 installation cost equals 325,000. Is that an earth triangle thing right there? No? No, but... Okay, go to the next one. I'm not sure where to get those numbers. Yeah, okay. Cost information and selling price of a certain machine are unavailable, but it is indicated that its annual income is $9 million. Similar machines, but of different productive capabilities, sell for 83500 one hundred fourteen thousand eight hundred and ninety seven thousand six hundred and have incomes of seven thousand nine thousand four hundred ninety and eight thousand dollars per year respectively so the eighty three thousand five hundred divided by seven thousand equals eleven point nine two eight six one hundred fourteen thousand eight hundred divided by nine thousand seven hundred ninety equals twelve point two zero nine six nine yeah that's a mistake that's a mistake because in their thing they have uh, nine four e ninety four ninety so okay go ahead yeah so then uh, ninety seven thousand six hundred divided by eight thousand equals twelve point two um, so twelve point zero seven five two two is the average so your twelve gim is correlated. So then you take the 9,000 times the 12 equals 108,000. Because, oh, I said 9 million earlier. It should have been 9,000 in the problem. So that's going to throw you all off. So do you want me to reread it? Okay. Cost information and selling price of a certain machine are unavailable, but it is indicated that its annual income is $9,000, not 9 million. 
Similar machines, but a different productive capability, sell for $83,500, $114,800, and $97,600, and have incomes of $7,490,490 and $8,000 per year, respectively. Mm -hmm. So that's where those numbers come from. So sorry about that. Okay. Number eight. A machine that rents for 2000 per month has a total economic life of eight years and is five years old. Industry information suggests that expenses for the machine are 20% of 20% are typical. Market information indicates that the capitalization rate for equipment like this should be 0.48. What is the current market value? 2000 times 12 equals 24,000 annual rent. 24,000 times 0 0.80 equals 19,200 um, 20% expenses. And then 19,200 divided by 0.48 is equal to $40,000. That's the current market value. Yeah, they say 20% uh, expenses, so that's why they're multiplied by 80. Yes, I saw Because you're taking that 20% off. Okay. So section G. A business that sells widgets uses the average cost method to estimate its cost inventory. On December 31st, this company had 10,500 widgets on hand. The following information was obtained from the company's purchase journal. So there are dates. Yeah. There's a column of the number of widgets purchased on that date mm -hmm. and the amount paid. Uh, the number of widgets purchased has been totaled, and it is 159500 and they've paid a total of 60869 What is the average cost of one widget? So you take the 60869 divide it by the 159500 equals 0 .3816, or $0.38 cents per widget. What is the cost of the ending inventory by the average cost method? You take 10,500 times the 0.38, which is equal to 3,990 cost of ending inventory. Did we read this the other night? Sure seems like it. It sure seems like it, yeah. Use the gross margin method which of the with the following facts. Cost of goods sold in the previous accounting period is equal to 241980 Sale in the previous accounting period equals 283800 Sales in the current accounting period, 132156 Beginning inventory at cost, 300000 Purchases this period at cost is 89160 What is the ending inventory value? So you take the 241980 divide it by uh, 283800 equals 0.85264. Then you take the 132156 times the 0 0.85264 equals 112681 Your beginning inventory at cost is $300,000 plus purchases at cost. 89,160 less sales at cost is 112,681 ending inventory value 276,479 use the retail markup method with the following facts retail value on January 1 40,000 retail market percentage 25 percent so 1 plus 25 equals 1.25 the market factor $40,000 divided by 1.25 equals 32000 the inventory value at cost. XYZ company is a wholesaler of widgets. They buy widgets with several they buy widgets several times a year on the following schedule. There's a date column with several dates. There's a unit purchase column with several units purchased the amounts and there's a price per unit column with the uh, various unit per price, uh, price per unit. The company sold widgets on the following schedule, 315 to 614, 10,500, 615 to 914, 8,800, and 915 to 1231, 4,300. 
value the inventory using FIFO. There were 36,100 units purchased, 23,600 units sold, and 12,500 remain in inventory. So uh, the 2,900, because they're still there, times $6, because that's the price per unit um, for those widgets, equals 17,400. Then 8,400 times $5 is equal to 42,000. And then 1,200 times 450 equals 54,000, uh, 5,400. The FIFO inventory is equal to 64,800. Now value the inventory using LIFO. So you'll use the value starting at the top. 5,300 times $4 equals 21,200. 4,700 times $4 equals 18,800. And 2,500 times $4.50 equals 11,250. So your LIFO inventory is valued at 51,250. Um, if a company has a retail inventory value of 125,000 and an inventory cost of 100,000, what is the markup factor? 125,000 divided by 100,000 equals 1.25 markup factor. Uh, a national chain discount store carries a Model S electric toaster. The cost was different each time they ordered from a supplier this year. <coughs> Details of the purchases are as follows. There is a date column with at least four different dates. Oh, look, December 14th. There is a unit column <laughs> of the number of units, and there is a cost column for how many, um, how much it cost. Uh, looks like maybe per dollar or per unit. Three units. And then there's a total dollar column for how much was spent um, on that date to purchase units. So, um, a problem, a physical count reveals 100 units at the end of the year. Problem A, what is the ending inventory using FIFO? So, 90 times 27 equals $2,430. Dollars, $2 10 times 25 equals $250. Dollars, and then that's 100 uh, units for a total of 2680 Problem B, what is the ending value by LIFO? So that's 55 times $18 equals 990. $35, 35 units times $20 equals 700. And 10 units times $25 equals 250 for a total of 1940 for LIFO. Problem C, what would be the value using the weighted mean? So you take the 990 plus 700 plus 500 plus 24, 2430 equals 4620. So then you take the 4620 divided by 200 equals $23.10. So $23.10 times the 100 equals 2310. You must appraise the inventory of a 72,000 square foot grocery store. Surprisingly, the owner refuses to supply any information. However, you find information on three very similar stores that were stocked similarly. This information reveals the following. Grocery store number one, their inventory at cost is equal to 1,200. Their square footage is 80,000 80, square foot. So then they're going to take the 1,200,000 value inventory, divide it by the 80,000 square foot, and it's equal to 15. So grocery store number two has an inventory at cost of 900,000 with a 60,000 square footage. 
So the 900,000 divided by 60,000 equals 15. Grocery store number three, inventory at cost 1,125,000 and 75,000 square footage. So 1,200,000, then they're going to take the 1,125,000 divided by 75,000 equals 15. So your inventory, appraising the inventory of a 72,000 square foot grocery store, which is in the problem. Uh -oh. The, yeah. Right. So you take the seventy-two thousand times the fifteen, and it's equal to one million eighty thousand dollars. Seventy-two thousand square feet times fifteen dollars per square foot. Per square foot. That's, that's what they're calculating. Yeah. yeah. On each of those comps. Section H. What is the value per square foot for inventory found in a CarQuest store with a medium density? Thirty-seven dollars. What is the value per square foot for F, F, and E in an auto parts star, store with fair quality and high density? Six dollars. They must give a chart. Yeah. What is the total value for a Napa auto parts store that is 6,000 square feet in size with medium density personal property? Assume that the F, F, and E are five years old. Six thousand times 37 equals 222,000. So then 6,000 times 12 is equal to, oh, I don't know what that's equal to. So 6,000 times 12, find that amount, multiply that by 0. 0.5 equals to 36,000. And then you're going to add up your two numbers there, 258,000. Uh, number four, what is the total value for an auto zone that is 5,000 square feet with a medium density F, F, and E and a high density inventory? The F, F, and E are four years old. 5,000 times 42 equals 210. 5,000 times 12, find that amount, times 0. 0.6 equals 36,000 equals 246,000. What is the total value for an O'Reilly's Auto Parts that is 4,000 square feet with high density? F, F, and E are two years old. 4,000 times 21 equals 84,000. 4,000 times 6 times 8 equals 19,200 for a total of 103,200. What is the value for the inventory found in a two nut masters with 3,000 square feet with a medium density? 3,000 times 0.8 equals 2,400. What is the value per square foot for FF&E in an AMCO transmission with the average quality and high density? $9. What is the total value for a full service shop that is 6,000 square feet in size with medium density personal property? Assume that the FF and E are seven years old. 6,000 times nine equals 54,000. 6,000 times 21 times 0.3 equals 37,800 for a total of 91,800. What is the total value for a quick lube that is 8,000 square feet with medium density FF&E and, e and high density inventory? The FF&E are two years old. 8,000 times 1.00 equals 8,000. 8,000 times 3 times 0 0.80 equals 19,200 for a total of 27,200. What is the difference per square foot between fair inventory at low density and good quality at high density? $19 less, 0 .70 equals $18.30. Mm -hmm. What do you do if the convenience store you are trying to value has gas pumps? Refer to another schedule for gas pump values and include as additive. What is the value of a quick trip with 75,000 square feet at high density that is one year old? Assume gas pumps add $100,000. 7,500 times 25 equals 187,500. 7,500 times 0.34 times 0.9 equals 229,500. So then 417,000 plus 100,000 equals 517,000. 
What is the value difference of FF&E of a $5,000 square foot convenience store if one is fair quality and medium density and the other is good quality at low density? Both stores' fixed assets are 5,000 or 5,000 years old. Are five years old. 5,000 times 8 times 0.5 equals 20,000. 5,000 times 27 times 0.5 equals 67,500. So the answer is 47,500. So the 47,500 is the value difference. Oh, they're just subtracting the two amounts. What's the value difference? Yeah. Yeah. Realize that. For. Yeah. What is the value per square foot for inventory found in a Dillard store with a medium density? $26. What is the value per square foot for FF&E in a Coles with fair quality and high density? $12. What is the total value for a Neiman Marcus store that is 36,000 36, square feet in size with medium density personal property? Assume that the FF&E are 8 years old. 36,000 times 53 equals 1,908,000. 36,000 times 21 times 0 0.2 equals 151,200 for a total of 2,059,200. What is the difference in the value schedules for motels 7023 from the other SIC categories that we have looked at before this one? They are valued by the room and not by the square footage. What would, the, what would be the total value for a 200 room Holiday Inn with medium density? 200 times 5,413 5, equals 1,082,600. Are there schedules somewhere? There probably is. Okay. I asked Irina to bring her book. Oh, okay. So we can, so I can look for those. Okay. Because <coughs> I want them. Okay. Um, what is the value of the personal property at a McDonald's? Dang, that has 8,000 square feet and is medium density. That's a big McDonald's. Um, it is estimated that the FF&E is four years old, and it also has playground equipment. So, 8,000 times 8 equals 64,000. 8,000 times 111.50 times 0 .6 equals 535,200 equals 599,200. What is the total value of the personal property for a four-year-old Taco Cabana that is 5,000 square feet and is considered to have high density, this location serves beer and wine. 5,000 times 950 equals 47,500. 5,000 times 0 0.13, nope, 5,000 times 132 times 0 0.6 equals 396,000. For a total of 443,500. Like the yeah, they, it's, that's what they're doing. Use the following information from renditions to construct a quality density schedule for a jewelry inventory. That is an ugly chart. It is properties A through M. Their quality is listed as either average, good, or fair. Their density is either high, low, or medium. I wouldn't read this. Don't read this. Don't? No, it's just too many things. <clears throat> Use the following information from renditions to construct a quality density schedule for jewelry inventory. We need the renditions. They're down below. Those, they're not down below. That's not what those are? And they're density schedules. See, we need these. We need schedule these density schedules for those problem for about the last ten or fifteen problems up above, and so we don't have those. So the end.